Hi, uh, I'm Lee Gatiss, uh, this is Rudolf and this is Lee on the lectionary and uh, we're looking today at the lectionary readings for the first Sunday at, of Christmas and those readings are Isaiah 63 verses 7 to 9, Hebrews chapter 2 verses 10 to 18 and Matthew chapter 2 verses 13 to 23. That's right isn't it Rudolf? Yes it is Lee. The readings this week remind us that Christmas is about God himself graciously coming among us, not just to identify with us or to bless us in the abstract, but to die as planned. Isaiah rejoices in the presence of God with his people and in all his gracious and mighty works for them. His steadfast love to his people meant that he could not remain at a distance or refuse to get involved in their sufferings and struggles. He shows them favour, not because they deserve it, but because of his mercy. They are his people, his children, and so sending a mere messenger or angel to help them would not be entirely sufficient. He must come himself. And, and astonishing as it is, God goes further. He lifted them up and carried them, it says, a sustaining love and care, which shows an ongoing concern for those he aspires to lift up out of their sin, out of their sorrow. The plans of this covenant-keeping God are not thwarted either by his enemy's strength or by his people's transgressions. Isaiah has already announced that one is coming who will bear the iniquities of his people and he be punished in their place and yet triumph over death to see the light of life. Isaiah 52 and Isaiah 53. And then, right on cue, the shadow of death falls over the nativity in Matthew chapter 2. But it proves no obstacle to the fulfilment of of God's purposes. The devil plans to strike the heel of Emmanuel and kill him, yet the time had not come for him to serve through suffering. A baby is too passive to be a willing sacrifice for sin, so if the Christ child had died it would not be so clear that God was at work to save. Yet Herod did all that he could to destroy the baby who threatened his power. A messenger or angel was sent to warn Joseph and a timely e escape was executed instead, fulfilling scripture in the purpose, in the process, which cannot help but point to this child. The devil does not give up so easily. His agent is incensed by the failure of his plan and so unleashes all the forces at his disposal. The innocent children, innocent at the very least because they were not guilty of being the Messiah, are slaughtered. Yet none of this falls outside the providence of God, whose prophet Jeremiah foresaw what would happen. When the threat from Herod is over, the path seems clear for a homecoming. But even then, Herod's son might have threatened the return of the son from Egypt. But God knows and God provides, warning in a dream and again fulfilling the prophets. Hebrews 2 can reflect on the work of the covenant-keeping God from the other side of the cross and resurrection. The author sees clearly that God's plan was to lift up his children and to bring them to glory. The necessity of Christmas is brought out in verse 14. The pioneer of salvation would have to go through death in order to destroy the one who brought down that veil upon the world. And so the immortal, invisible God, who alone can save, as Isaiah said, needed to take the blood and flesh that his children possess, so that he might die for them. He took flesh to taste death, that his people, his family, might be atoned for and live. Through his suffering, they, we, are sanctified. 
through his death, they are released from the fear of death which held them in slavery all their lives and caused them to resort to religious and superstitious protectionism. Now they have a saviour God who gets his hands dirty and out of mercy acts as both faithful high priest and willing victim. In the distress of temptation and testing, only one who has been perfected through suffering himself is adequate to lift us up and carry us home. I wish you a very happy Christmas, don't we Rudolph? Yes we do Lee. Merry Christmas. <laughs>